Good afternoon, Kitchissippi. It is Saturday, September the 17th. This is a video version of the 404th Kitchissippi Weekly Ward Newsletter. My usual reminder, there's lots more information about all of the topics that we'll be discussing in that weekly newsletter, to which you can subscribe at kitchissippiward.ca. It's a thick one this week, so I'm going to jump right in. The first item is pop-up office hours. I just finished my office hours here at Westboro Farmers Market. Uh, as always, uh, very busy, great chat. It is absolutely a beautiful day. But if you miss those, I'm going to be hosting more uh, pop-up office hours on September the 17th. That's uh, this upcoming Tuesday, I believe, from 9.30 a.m. until 12.30 p.m. Come on by, chat with me about whatever is on your mind. Pop-up office hours are an opportunity to come by anytime during those hours without appointment to chat with me one-on-one. -on -one. I'm looking for a couple more volunteers to help me with a traffic count at the corner of Laurier and Lyon this upcoming Wednesday morning. I want to count the traffic there, bikes and uh, motor vehicles, from 7.30 until 8.30 a.m. I'm looking for a couple more volunteers so that we can more specifically assign certain movements to certain volunteers, make light work for everybody. If you're able to help me out, please drop me a line at jeff.leeper at ottawa.ca. Also in the newsletter, uh, there's a heads up, and, and the material is now online, for the change in the 335 Roosevelt um, uniform proposal that's at the foot of Roosevelt Avenue. Some of you will remember an open house we had, uh, it seems like months and months ago now, to take a look at a revised plan for that development in light of the fact that the city is uh, acquiring a portion of the land in order to turn into a park. I've only had the briefest look at it. The plans that are being applied for look approximately like what we saw a couple of weeks ago. All the information is available on the city's dev app site. I've provided a link in the newsletter. Uh, committee of Adjustment, I've got a whack of stuff in the Committee of Adjustment uh, section this weekend. Cabby. Uh, so first, panel one of the committee, I've mentioned this a couple of times, is going to meet this September the 18th with two items that I assume are going to be uncontentious, both of which are consent for subdivisions, one of them at 531, 533 Broadhead, the other at 461 Tweeds Muir to create separate ownerships for semi-detached on those properties. There are also several applications uh, for the October 2nd hearing of the Committee of the Adjustment. At 497 Roosevelt, the owners are seeking variances associated with the construction of a two-story detached dwelling. They're looking for a number of variances, including on the minimum interior side yard, uh, some additional uh, rear yard. Um, there is also a, a, a lot depth variance being sought. More information in the newsletter. At 265 Churchill, 325 Bloomfield, there's a fairly complicated set of applications, one of which is for a number of variances associated with a, uh, I believe, a three-story long semi. There's also conveyance of land between those uh, two different properties. Uh, it's a little bit complicated. If you have questions, by all means, please call my office. Alice will help you out. Um, at 633 Edison, the owners are seeking to sever the lot, construct a detached and a semi-detached building uh, with multiple different variances being sought. And at 130 Kenilworth, uh, which is at the corner of Holland, uh, the owner is seeking to subdivide to create separate lots for each half of a semi that's already there. The variance is being triggered by uh, the new front yard parking, which wouldn't otherwise be allowed. And then finally, I have the decision with respect to three 88 Richmond Road. That's where McDonald's filed for a variance in order to be allowed to offer no parking versus the parking that was required by the zoning bylaw. I'm kind of surprised, but the Committee of Adjustment has refused that application. I'll uh, not get too deep into it. I have the decision. Um, the, uh, the corporation was not able to satisfactorily answer a number of the questions that were posed by the committee. I will just caution that is now um, in its appeal period. They have until October 3rd to appeal that decision to the Ontario Land Tribunal.
The number 11 is running a number of electric buses today, and I have to tell you, it's a delight when those go by. In community news, the Westboro Legion is hosting its trivia night. They've got a prize, a couple of prizes of up to $750 donation to your favorite charity. Um, the next uh, Westboro Legion trivia night is October 1st. You can register your team of up to six players, $15 a player, at the link that I provided in the newsletter. Kitchissippi United Church is hosting its rummage sale that will be on October the 18th and 19th. The Parkdale Food Center's Right to Food event is a, a really chock full event that is going to be taking place on Sunday, October 5th, uh, in and around the Minowasini um, Food Center that is at 5 Hamilton Avenue North. There's going to be food, there's going to be uh, various friend, uh, family friendly activities. Uh, it looks like a big block party. I've got lots more details in the newsletter. Um, the uh, climate fresks uh, have been offered at Dovercote. Those are workshops taking a look at uh, what can be done about climate change at a local level. Uh, Don Spruill has been organizing those. They've been uh, pretty popular. There are more upcoming, including September 19th and Wednesday, October 2nd, at the Dovercourt Recreation Center, as well as at the Nepean Sports Center on October the 15th. Lots more details in the newsletter. Uh, it is annual general meeting season. Hittenberg Community Association is hosting its AGM on September the 26th. Westboro Community Association is hosting its annual general meeting on September the 25th. I'll be at both of those events. Hintonburg's is as usual at the Hintonburg Community Center. Westboro's as usual at the Churchill Senior Center. Uh, the McKellar Park Fall Fair is coming up. That's going to be on September the 22nd from 10.30 until 2.30 p.m. That's always a blast, lots of activities. Hope to see many of you out at that. Um, Synapsity, which is an organization to help citizens to develop uh, the capacity to engage with uh, particularly City Hall, but other levels of government, is launching a, a discussion series. One of those is going to be at the uh, Rosemount Library in Hintonburg. It starts on September 16th. Lots more details in the newsletter. Uh, it is a very busy week as it was last week with respect to committee and council meetings. We're going to kick things off on Monday, that's September the 16th, with our finance and corporate services meeting. That is the meeting to which the mayor and staff will bring a motion on um, budget directions. You've seen by now the headlines. The mayor is proposing that for most of the city budget, the tax increase would be limited to 2.9% very deliberately leaving a large hole in the budget of $120 million to be filled to pay for transit. There are a number of options on how that big hole in transit could be paid for. Everything from uh, increased property taxes, increased fares, cuts to service, one-time measures. Um, as well, we are all hoping on City Council as additional help from the federal and the provincial governments. Um, pay attention or uh, take, uh, take note on Monday when the budget directions document will go to the Finance Committee. Um, there is also a land expropriation as part of the future BRT, uh, baseline BRT, as well as, I believe it's the Q2 operating status for the city's budget, all on Monday's agenda, um, a link to which I have um, put it in the agenda. A city Council is going to meet on September 18th. That is our second kick at the can for those members who don't sit on um, uh, the Finance Committee to vote on that budget directions document. I expect that that will be most of the discussion on September the 18th. A number of other items are moving forward that uh, I don't expect to be particularly contentious, including the rezoning for West Haven uh, to allow more units into the existing dwelling that was approved last week at the Planning and Housing Committee, and the heritage protection for 50 Carruthers that was again approved at the Built Heritage Committee last week. Uh, we will also have a vote at City Council on my motion. I'm sure you've uh, probably read too much about it already to roll back the frequency reductions for our LRT service. Um, I've got materials all over social media talking about why I think that that is important. Uh, there is going to be a meeting on Thursday, September 19th, joint meeting at first of the Emergency and Protective Services Committee as well as the Environment and Climate Change Committee. They're going to be considering a um, 
somewhat more restrictive idling bylaw. When that move uh, meeting is over, the um, uh, sorry, emergency and protective services committee will meet as normal. Uh, their rule uh, agenda uh, is substantially about uh, amendments to the snowplow licensing regime. I believe that those amendments are what are um, consequential to the provincial change that we saw several months ago out of Queen's Park. I haven't had a chance to read it, but I know that many of you are very interested in the snowplow li uh, licensing rules. Then uh, the Community Services Committee is going to meet on September the 24th. Its agenda includes an update on the long-term care, person-centered care. Uh, there will be a motion on the table to integrate uh, Crime Prevention Ottawa into the Community Safety and Wellbeing Plan, as well as an update report on the Community Partnership Capital Grant Program. Uh, I've tried to stuff as much as I could into this one as quickly as I can. I apologize for the sound quality. I forgot my microphone this uh, week. Kitchissippi, I hope you have a great week. I hope this weather holds. Thank you for watching.